G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, Australia's Missile Force, the Army's 10th Brigade. First, a big thank you to my subscribers for getting the channel to 8,000. Next goal, 10,000 subscribers. Australia's Defence Strategic Review stated that the ADF's current force structure is not fit for purpose for the current strategic circumstances, and that the ADF must move from a joint to an integrated focused force with long range strike from all domains. For the Army, this means the introduction of new and enhanced capabilities. A new combat brigade, the 10th Brigade based in Adelaide, is to be raised to support the three manoeuvre brigades. This new brigade is to be a future focused fires formation, employing key future long range strike capabilities. This briefing will examine the current and possible future weapon systems and structure of the Army's new Missile Brigade. As a reminder of where the ADF's operational focus is, Australia's area of primary defence interest includes the northeastern Indian Ocean through maritime Southeast Asia into the Pacific. The Army is to be optimised for littoral operations in these areas. Australia's approach to operating in these areas is to be a strategy of denial, including through long-range surface strike. Perhaps the most well-known of the weapon systems to be part of this new brigade is the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS MLRS. It will be a central part of the Army's enhanced focus on littoral operations, providing the Army for the first time with long-range surface strike, including against maritime targets. It is clear now why the Army went for the M142 HIMARS instead of the M270 MLRS, due to it being able to deploy faster and in greater numbers due to its lighter weight. Perhaps mirroring the US Marine Corps' littoral regiments, the Army will be able to deploy the HIMARS to islands via the new landing ships and current Air Force C-130 and C-17 aircraft. The HIMARS system is planned to enter service in 2026 to 2027, with 42 HIMARS launches now to be procured. HIMARS will be able to fire a wide range of munitions from its single pod. Now, this could include six of the 227mm guided MLRS or Gimlars, with the standard Gimlars ranging out to around 90km, or the extended range version out to around 150km. Or one 610mm Attackums with a range of out to around 300km, or two of the new 430mm Precision Strike Missiles, or PRISM. An advanced development of the Attackums with a range beyond 500 kilometres, the PRISM will be capable of hitting fixed or moving targets on land or at sea. While the structure of the new HIMARS Regiment is not yet public, with 42 launches to come into service, it should allow for around 18 launches in a regiment. A possible structure might consist of three batteries, each of three troops. The other current component of the 10th Brigade is the Short Range Air Defence Missile System, part of the broader ADF Integrated Air and Missile Defence capability. The Australian Army is to finally replace its air defence capability under Project LAN 19 Phase 7B with a National Advanced Surface to Air Missile System, or NASAMS. Australia is procuring the latest version of NASAMS, the NASAMS 3. This version utilises the Mark II canister, which can launch the standard AM120 AMRAAM, as well as the AMRAAM ER, or Extended Range, and AIM-9X Block II Sidewinder. The Sidewinder has an IR seeker and is used for shorter range engagements, while the AMRAAM and Extended Range AMRAAM radar guided missiles are for longer range engagements out to and beyond 50 kilometres. The initial NASAMs delivered to the Army are the palletised version carried by truck. The Mark II canister launcher is integrated on a flatbed pallet with a hook lift mounting point so it can be easily loaded or unloaded from the HX77 8x8 truck. Complementing this is the high mobility launcher that will provide a more mobile capability for land 19 phase 7B. Based on the Hawkeye chassis, it will also be able to launch the AMRAAM AM9X Block II Sidewinder and the Extended Range AMRAM. 
As with the US Marine Corps' littoral regiments, the Army will likely deploy the high mobility NASAMs together with the high Mars II islands, protected by light infantry. The NASAMs are to equip a 16th Regiment, which is to be equipped with two batteries, each of two troops. It would make sense and seem likely that Australia will increase the Army's air and missile defence capabilities. A third battery in this regiment would help in this regard. A likely third component of the 10th Brigade and the second element of the Army's long-range fires capability is to be delivered through Project Land 4100 Phase 2. Complementing the HIMARS, which in the future will have an anti-ship capability, Project Land 4100 Phase 2 will deliver to the Australian Army a land-based dedicated maritime strike capability, likely to play a crucial role in any future conflict in littoral areas, facilitating sea denial and control. One option is a land-based version of the Naval Strike Missile, or NSM, the ship launch version of which has been ordered by the Royal Australian Navy, and possibly for the Royal Australian Air Force in the form of the JSM version. The NSM candidate for Australia is the Strike Master, which integrates the NSM with the Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicle, in a similar concept to the US Marine Corps' Nemesis, or Navy Marine Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System capability. The NSM has a 300 pound or around 130 kilogram warhead and a range of 100 nautical miles or 185 kilometres. Another candidate for land 4100 is Lockheed Martin's AGM 184C long range anti ship missile, surface launched, which it suggests launching from the M142 High Mars. It is derived from the AGM 158, which has been ordered by the Royal Australian Air Force. While we don't know what an MSM regiment will look like, it would most likely consist of at least two batteries, each with at least two troops. A total of 18 launches within the regiment would be optimal. In summary, the Army will, over the next few years, bring into service a number of new long-range capabilities. As a result of these new capabilities, the Army's longest range weapons will go from roughly 40 kilometres, or 25 miles, to around 300 kilometres, 186 miles, and then to over 500 kilometres, or more than 300 miles. Co-locating the Army's new missile capabilities in the Fires Brigade makes sense, as it will ease maintenance and training requirements. The Brigade's location, not too far from a large training area, ensures the weapons can be exercised to greater effect. Also, these units will not deploy as a whole, but rather be apportioned out to the three manoeuvre brigades as required. While the increase in number of HIMARS launches suggests the Army will be able to maintain a battery-sized unit deployed for longer periods of time, will the Army have enough air and missile defence capability with the small number of missile launches currently projected? That concludes today's briefing. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cero.